Hey, welcome to Maine Pod Girl. This is a podcast made by pop heads for pop heads. Every episode, y'all can check in with us while we discuss your burning questions as well as what's happening in pop music. Throughout the series, we'll be chiming in on our favorite recent discussion threads and diving into the latest pop emergencies. Hey, y'all. I'm Sola. Been here before. Um, <laughs> I'm your host. I'm an alt pop R&B artist and songwriter. I am the other host, also known as AJ Marks. I'm also an artist and songwriter. <laughs> Let's introduce our main mod girl for the podcast, our server owner of the Popheads Discord. Riri is here with us today. Say hi to the people, Ri. Hi, guys. You guys might know me as poster gal Riri. You know, <laughs> I've got to represent Zara and Rihanna. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so funny that we actually have someone here today whose username is relevant. And that's because we have a super special special guest artist joining us today her gold certified first album so good was the second most streamed by a female artist on spotify she has had six uk top 10 singles four brit award nominations multiple worldwide hits and is the fourth biggest selling swedish artist of all time it is none other than zara larson Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Of course. (laughs) What's up? What's up? I am in London, actually, quarantining, here to write some songs, feeling great, feeling happy. What day of quarantine are you in? It's, um, hmm, I'm here for five days in this apartment, so I think two more days, two more days. Oh, nice. So let's start off with just like a cute little icebreaker. So yeah, what has everyone been listening to? What is some music that we cannot stop listening to? Sola, you first. <laughs> Apparently I have been nominated, even though I was introducing the segment so that I would not be nominated <laughs> first. No, she <laughs> likes to just nominate everyone and go last, but I'm just going to make sure that she goes first this time. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's because I'm so undecisive. But I must say that I have been like obsessed with this song called Sex With My Ex by Lute, Travis Barker, Captain Cuts, and Home Alone. And it's just that like emo pop kind of vibe or whatever that I've just been missing since like the 2000s. Mm. And um, (laughs) um, but mostly it's because of like this guy Home Alone, like his vocal performance in it is like nuts. It is actually like B-A-N-A-N-E-S. It is so (laughs) good. Um, And also, so I've just been checking out Home Alone's discography after that, and then um, some, uh, uh, yeah, Weston Estates. I don't mm. know if you're familiar with them. They're like this, uh, like, I don't even know how to describe them, kind of like indie pop band, but not like, I don't know, it's R&B-ish. I don't even know. I don't know. Check them out. It's really good. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> what about you, uh, Riri? I'm going to nominate Riri because now it's, okay. I have the I'm power. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, it's a throwback for me. I grew up listening to the Beach Boys. So right now, because we're heading into summer, it's so nice out. The weather's gorgeous. I have been listening to Kokomo by the Beach Boys on loop. And it's it's been like a week now and I can't stop. Um, And I would say, you know, my other... um, current listening favorite is probably be sweet by a japanese breakfast it's sort of like an oh, upbeat, nice upbeat pop you know banger um she is essentially working on writing an album about romance and i am a turbo romantic at heart <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so it sort of just fits me i love that hopeless romantic yes maybe not hopeless definitely romantic <laughs> <laughs> i realized after i said it how insulting that might oh, have um <laughs> but um you strike me as the hopeless type <laughs> definitely not hopeless <laughs> well i've also been listening to i've been in need of like one of those you know throwback pop rock vibe yeah that's songs. where i've been this is like the most basic pick probably for all of my icebreakers that we've done on this podcast but good for you by olivia rodrigo slaps so hard slaps so hard aj bringing us the new music thank you thank you (laughs) i also um i've been listening to loads of leon bridges because he released his song motorbike recently and i just oh i fucking love it he's like my favorite yeah you do and then also we recorded an episode with aj mitchell and since then since talking to him about his music i've just been like listening to he released growing pains i've been listening to that nonstop. he's so good stop is incredible Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and then julia michaels's new album tate mcrae the heim album 
Damn, you're you're listening mm. to a lot. Yeah, I'm you just don't stop. Music. I'm in you're quarantine. On. I'm listening. I, all I have is music. So. Oh, true, true. Zara, yeah. tell us, what should we be listening to? Uh, you know what? I am actually the worst person at keeping up with, first of all, new music. Because once I find something, I'm like, okay, this is what we're sticking with for the rest of the year. And also, oh my God, the same. past year, I feel like, you know, you mentioned the Beach Boys, which is very, like, throwbacky, And that's kind of where I've been at. Period. Like, sing-along in the car songs. Songs mm. that everybody know, or, like, go-to mm. karaoke songs. I don't know why they make me feel so safe. Or, like, it makes me feel, like, that comfort and the feeling of familiarity has really... Um, been my vibe since the whole pandemic started. So mm-hmm. we're talking like living on a prayer. Yes. We're talking like yes. don't stop <laughs> screaming. Like <laughs> in that yes. way. <laughs> we love it. Sorry, you're kind of outing yourself as you just bought Guitar Hero <laughs> World Tour. <laughs> Honestly. You just bought now music. Which like. is fine because that, I have a playlist of the Guitar Hero World Tour songs that I used to play every day as a kid and it is probably my favorite playlist. Yeah, because you just feel, and they're good songs too. They're but such it, it's some um, like nostalgic feeling. I don't know. Yes. Or I've been listening to, I have this playlist called What Living Should Feel Like. Ooh. And uh, it's just a bunch of like kind of, kind of songs from movies. Um, it's a little classical, a little bossa nova. Most of them don't have people singing on them. So very not pop and very, you know, walking down the street pretending I am a main character in a movie vibe. <laughs> That's me all the time. Yes. Every time I watch it, on us. I so own it. Cinematic. <laughs> yes. So cinematic. But also I love that. a lot of dance. Like the blaze. I love the blaze. Ooh, I don't know the blaze. Oh my gosh, amazing. And they have amazing, amazing music videos. So I've been really into um, I've just been into stuff lately that I haven't like really explored, like the dance EDM side. I haven't really dived into that except for very recently. So that's like a whole new world for me. Nice. I love that. And maybe it'll reflect on your next album, which maybe so, you're maybe so. already working on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or working on right now, right? That's why you're in London. So. Yeah, exactly. I love the work ethic. I'm kind of like that too. Just can never <laughs> stop. I just feel sad when I don't work. I don't know if that's healthy. Mm, yeah, like why take a break when it makes but, you so happy? <laughs> yeah. Right. I was going to say, girl, you are stuck in capitalism. Yeah. No. <laughs> Victims of burnout, maybe. <laughs> Worth it, maybe. You know what I yeah. mean? It's hard to draw the line because you never know, like, am I, especially like hitting the wall, but you're like, but I'm having so much fun. And it's like, yeah, Mm. but you can also chill. Like, that's fine. But I, (laughs) if I chill, I just stay in bed, like just stay in bed. So I'm so happy to be talking to you guys now because if I weren't doing this, I would be in my bed. Fair. Fair. Honestly, not a bad place to be. <laughs> I mean, those both sound like really good options, but yeah, I'm glad you're here with too. us, too. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. Okay, well, then, I think this is a perfect time to get into our real pod girl shit. Mm. So this episode, we're going to talk all things Zara Larson. so it's good that we have Zara herself here today to do so. <laughs> so, uh, kind of bouncing off of what you were just talking about with, like, karaoke songs and things like that, um, I just want to know really quickly, what is your go-to karaoke song? Mm. I feel like ever since Shallow was released, (laughs) I feel like that's my new one. (laughs) That's a great one. (laughs) Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, it's it's just so good. And it's super karaoke friendly, especially if you want to do with a friend. Yeah, because it's kind of like duetty, but you can make it a solo song too. 100% works. And that bridge, like euphoric, Uh, euphoric. uh, uh, (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's just too good. I saw that movie like three times. <sighs> yeah, that one is great. Um, or I really like No One with Alicia Keys. Mm. Mm. Great karaoke yes. song. Yes. Or like Party in the USA. Uh-huh. Yes. So good. Banger. <laughs> we all have our hairbrush jams. These are songs that like uh, w- when you put them on you can't help but sing your little heart out to them. Sometimes <laughs> you get your own very own hairbrush microphone. My Starbucks tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be jamming into this. What are your hairbrush jams? What are my hairbrush songs? Honestly anything that you know what's funny? <laughs> 
It's a lot of Drake. And um, really? I could totally see that. He's such a good songwriter. Like, he's just, like, one of the best writers, I believe. And I used to pretend, or I used to, I still do this, that I walk into the studio and I'm, like, with a producer and the producer's like, yeah, yeah, I got I got this beat. Like, listen. And then in my head, I'm pretending that, like, I'm Drake. And <laughs> I just said, okay, play it. And then I freestyle the whole song. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, and everybody yes. in the studio was like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, just lay down that verse in the one <laughs> take. And everybody shook and they're like, she's so talented. Like, that's what's going on in my head. <laughs> this is all in my head. I honestly felt like that was real. I honestly did. <laughs> you had me. You could picture it, you could see it. So, anything Drake, because um, I just think he's super cool. Or. You know, if I'm actually going to sing, sing, it would be um, maybe Emotions by Destiny's Child. Like, oh, oh, so you, good. You're all three Timeless. members. <laughs> right? Yes. All the harmonies, everything. Yeah. It's yes. like in Fergalicious. <laughs> if you don't rap that entire verse <laughs> yeah. all by yourself, you're fake. I'm sorry. You're fake. <laughs> it's truth. I was going to say, you have like a lot of R&B influences and you listen to a lot mm. of R&B music. Yeah. And although Poster Girl is a pop record, yeah. uh, Zeus Seuss, which is one of the users, is asking if you've ever considered making more of an R&B leaning record, like a pure R&B record. Yeah, I would love that. And funny enough, I think Poster Girl is definitely like very pop and very fun and dancey. Um, but when I started making that album... Everybody was like, cool, so we're doing R&B. Like, I heard you're doing an R&B record. I was like, Who's, who said that? Because I, I don't know. Is this what you want me to do? Because I haven't told anybody what I want this record to be. But for some reason, so many times I went into the studio and people were like, cool, so like, I heard you doing this R&B vibe. And I was like, no. But I should. I should try it because I love R&B. I love to listen to it, but also, you know, just because you enjoy something um, or to consume something, it doesn't mean you have to do exactly that, but R&B is definitely something that I would be very much down to try. Like, just a bit, I don't know, sexier, put in some more harmonies, mm. slow down the track a bit. Um, Half time. Some of those yeah. like Ariana Grande <laughs> yeah, layered absolutely. vocals. Make your own sex banger album. You recorded with Ariana Grande. Well, um, kind she was of, in the studio. Like backing vocals. Yeah. yeah. She's so sweet. Was that for, what song was that? It was an unreleased one. Um, it's really good. You know, that's the sad part about making an album is that you write so many good songs, but all of them won't fit on the album. Like, imagine mm. how many songs that are out there just floating around in people's clouds and uh, they just won't ever see the light of day. I'm not saying this song will ever, won't ever see it, because you never know, you know? Sometimes mm -hmm. a song lays around for years, but yeah, it's not out yet, mm -hmm. at least. We actually had someone ask, Akane was right, asked, we know that a lot of good music was made for this album that didn't make the finished album. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any songs cut from the album that really hurt to leave out? Yeah. You can spill One some song. names if you want. One song <laughs> called Another Hour. And uh, I wrote that one to my sister. I mean, now or last year and this year, it's been like living in a dream bubble because I've just been home. But usually mm -hmm. my life doesn't look like that. I travel a lot. I'm away a lot. I see her almost never. And I'm also really, really bad at staying in contact with people that I don't see on a daily basis. Ugh, it was just always really, really hard to to leave my hometown and leave my family and friends. But, um, yeah, it's basically like I, if I had another hour in my day, I would spend that with you. And it's very oh, sad. That's so cute. And, um, oh, no, that's, that's so sweet. That's, sweet. that's yeah, so cute. And it's like, you know, you're trying to make up for it by like buying stuff or like sending gifts or like, you know, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you don't want like a new bag you want quality time with the people you love so it's i just love that song and i really want it to come out in one way or another for sure even if you well, just have to leak it yourself and yeah, pretend <laughs> yeah. yeah. give us the google Oops. drive <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah what oh here you go oh no 
oh, my song is, what? Yeah. How did they get that? <laughs> Accidentally just uploaded it to YouTube. Right? Oops. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. Are any of the songs that it hurt to not release, are they going to appear on the deluxe? Mm, no. <laughs> yeah. Are they all like new songs that you didn't even consider for Poster Girl? Um, actually, no, no, no. I one song I wrote like at the very, very end, and it just didn't have time to like. We didn't have time to fit it on the album, but I love it. It's very much giving me like '80s. Um, what I've been listening to throughout this whole year, uh, super fun. So like living on a prayer. Yes, your Bon Jovi. <laughs> it's is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> like a dancey Bon Jovi. Yeah, it, yes. it, it is. Like a dancey Bon Jovi. Dancey was, Bon Jovi. <laughs> I love that. Mm, or is it... Mm, <laughs> that, it's, it's, it's also giving me a little like Avril Lavigne in a way. Like A, a little what? Avril. Like, oh, Avril, Avril yeah. Lavigne? Yeah. I love the way you pronounce that. Oh my God. Avril Lavigne. You were like, who? Avril. <laughs> No, but I Avril love Levine. that. How do you say that? Avril Lavigne. Have I been saying her name wrong my whole life? Yes, I have. Oh, wait, wait, did we just... <laughs> did we just break it to you? Oh, no. <laughs> Avril Lavigne? Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. Okay, now I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. <laughs> I just read stuff, and then I make up pronunciations in my head. Same. I've never really heard... How have you been saying it your whole life? Avril Lavigne. <laughs> and no one said anything? <laughs> no. You, you've just been winging it. <laughs> I haven't been saying her name a lot in my life, though. Like, I've, I've read right, her right. name a lot. Or, like, you know, when you text someone, but out loud, I haven't... And no one stopped me in my tracks. I'm wow. so ready for this to just lead to a collaboration. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. At yes. the beginning, you'll walk into the booth like Drake, and you'll be like, Avril Lavigne. <laughs> and you're going to rhyme it and lay it down. Yes. With Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's embarrassing. Well, it, it's like Avril Lavigne. Avril, stop. Yeah. Avril, uh, Avril Lavigne. Yes. Yeah. Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. Yes. Legend, icon. Avril Legend. This is actually going to get flipped back on us because when we do the top five and we have to pronounce all these Swedish artists' names. Oh yeah. You're going to hear our American pronunciations of it, and you are going to judge us so hard. You're going to have a great time. You're going to be upset. You'll be fine. We're going to have to ask you to hold our hands. To the pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> so. Kind of rewinding again, actually, with, with you know what you were talking about, like how uh, like work ethic, what you were saying, AJ. Um, so because your dad is in the military, right? Yeah. And your mom's a nurse. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up just like in a household that kind of um, put that sort of discipline into you? Like, you know, character building kind of mm. uh, <laughs> household that... <laughs> like influenced your approach to your music career i'm just laughing because i am the most disorganized person <laughs> ever to be found like I'm, so maybe the opposite i don't i don't know i think it's just my personality that just doesn't go well with that whole organizing situation <laughs> but um my parents have always been very very supportive like in everything I would do you know I chose singing but if I would you know want wanting to be anything else they would support that with their whole hearts and um you know it's just a regular schmegular family I think regular uh, schmegular uh, <laughs> regular regular it really is yeah shout out Cardi B regular schmegular yeah. but it was <laughs> It was like a very normal, nice upbringing. Um, I know a lot of military families in the U.S. move around a lot, but I have lived in the same house for my whole childhood. My mom and my dad are not into music uh, at all. Really? Well, my dad is, but they're not musical, you know? Yeah. Um, they love to listen to music, especially my dad, but... It wasn't like, hey, like my mom were like, hey, I wanted to be a singer when I grew up and I couldn't do that. So like now I'm going to put that onto my daughter and like make it like pageant girls. You know Momager. What I mean? yeah. um, but no, if anything will taught me discipline, if I have just an uns of it, would probably be my years at uh, ballet school because I went to the Royal Swedish Ballet School. And you just do, like, it doesn't really matter if you are a professional or, like, a new beginner. You kind of do the same exercises 
um, but just you advance them a bit more. So by doing the same thing repeatedly, day in and day out, but just seeing yourself getting better at it, I feel like that taught me at least grit in a way or like determination to like getting somewhere and not to give up because you can, you know, develop. Okay. So not to lean too hard into this segue, but segue. <laughs> electric <laughs> scooters or laser tag, which would you rather do with Beyonce? I mean, that's actually really hard. I think we would have such a good time scooting down the street and like, which street in Stockholm mm-hmm. or yeah. LA? No, in Stockholm. It's way more, like, they're way more scootable. Yeah. And, uh, scootable. And we would just scoot around, and, like, it's kind of dangerous to hold hands on them, but mm. I would love that. But if we go on the same, <laughs> if we go on yes. the same page, like, if we're on the same speed, you know, we can, like, talk to each other while we're on them. Yeah. Which is kind of hard to do when you're playing laser tag. So, that's very true. You can't really connect when you're yeah, shooting lasers that's at what each I'm other. Thinking. So we would yeah. just, like, roll down. <laughs> Uh, maybe I have a speed, like a backpack speaker, and yeah. uh, it's like the sun is setting, and we're just going down to the water. Oh my gosh! You know, tandem bikes. If there were tandem electric scooters, oh, that would be the one so for you and nice. Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's also tall, so you know. Is she? she oh, is she's she tall? tall. She's taller than I am. Um, she's not tall, tall, but she's taller than I am. So I. H- would, how tall are you? Uh, 163 centimeters, which is 5'4", I think. Uh, so okay. she could be, like, behind me, and I could be in front of her, and she would, like, you know, hold the steering thing, and I would, like, like, hold like, you like a baby. Child. I love what you thought about this. <laughs> yes. yes. I, Jay-Z would like a word. You're like, oh, I already have it envisioned. Um, I mean, this, this was your other dream that you had. Right. So you had the Drake right. dream, yes. and then you had yes. this dream. It was yeah. very easy to answer. Um, I was going to say, when you were talking about holding hands with Beyonce, that reminded me of something I saw today on Pop Heads. <laughs> this is not a question for you. I just thought this was really okay. funny. User hey. Sweat It says, why do some rich, famous people have two toilets next to each other? I saw Beyonce oh and Jay-Z gosh. also have that same setup in their house. Is it to hold hands oh while God. they're going together or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. Are you talking about the bidet thing? Yes, that is such an American question. <laughs> just What's that tiny so toilet for? Just thinking of them holding hands while going to the bathroom. One smaller and one bigger. Oh, so shout out sweat it for that. Wow. So we've had a question, you know, we're wondering, all of Popheads is wondering, it's been a question for months now, and it's a big one. Um, you know, you, you're you totally free to not answer it, but, you know, there's a lot of people waiting on you for this one. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Don't I'm be scared. Now. No, I'm so scared. <laughs> a lot of people want to know why All the Time did not make it onto uh... Poster Girl. <laughs> I don't know if I have a good answer to that. Honestly, I don't. Because it was about... I don't know. No. Let me think. I think because I wanted the the album to have new songs. The majority of the songs I wanted to be, like, unheard and new. Um, And because So Good was kind of the opposite. You know, I released a whole bunch of singles, and then I collected them, and I, like, added some new songs. I was like, here's my album. Um, but this one, I wanted the majority to be new and I didn't want it to be too long. I wanted, I actually originally wanted to be like a 10 track album, but then I was like, no, that's too, that's too short. But when it came between, it was like, wow, or all the time, like who's going to make the album, who's going to make the album. And wow was just more relevant at that point for me. Uh, also it's still out there. For everybody who wants to listen. It still exists. It still exists. I didn't take it off the platforms. <laughs> Please but don't. But it's, um, <laughs> it's funny because people ask me that a lot. Um, but I love the song. And it would have made, it kind of would have made sense uh, on this album, I think, sonically and um, lyric-wise. But uh, that's it, really. I mean, I'm just happy you gave us more new music, yeah. so we're not yeah. complaining. Yeah. <laughs> so um, your album's called Poster Girl, of mm-hmm. course. So what do you think you're the poster girl of? Oh, wow. 
I <laughs> think it's such a hard question because I think I am a poster girl or would like to be of so many things. Sometimes I am like, ugh, and especially on social media and like how you present yourself. I want to be a million different things. I want to be like the fashion girl who wears like sleek Swedish styles, but I also want to be the fashion girl who wears like, you know, glitter and glamour and like drag makeup. But I also want to be the fashion girl who wears like on and on and on and on. And my person, I, I want to be so many things. Um, but I think... You know, hopefully good pop, fun pop dance music, um, like poster girl of like standing up for mm. women's rights um, or any human rights. But I'm such a feminist and I think, you know, I don't really sing about it in my songs. But if you follow me anywhere, I I think, you know, uh, darn well where I stand politically, where <laughs> I stand in my opinions regarding, you know women's rights and issues and everything surrounding that it was also like a little nod to the all the amazing women that i have had on my walls growing up that i've been looking at the majority of them being beyonce the posters <laughs> um and yeah she was the only one who got like that i spent Multiple money on posters. you know right because <laughs> all of the other ones were the times where i used to have those posters in like a magazine or something in that yeah. you know the the full page like in the middle but she oh, yes. had like real merch yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's crazy to think that i might be on someone's wall out there i mean there is that picture of you on the album cover of you being on, on your, your own, own wall, wall. exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that. Well, You're at least giving them the idea subliminally. <laughs> yes. You'd be yeah. like, see how good this looks? <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's just natural. Mm -hmm. It kind of worked because my best friend and I collect vinyl, and we have a vinyl wall in our living room. And nice. I, I definitely, I'm not going to lie to you, I ordered Poster Girl on vinyl. I did. Oh, because I love the album. Thanks. And it'll be going Thank up you. there, so you are a Poster Girl. You can just I know love that. that. <laughs> at least in Ree's house. Yes. Yes. yes, in our house, yes. <laughs> thanks. So... As you, as you mentioned yourself, uh, people who follow you, like longtime fans, will know where you stand on social media and, um, and your beliefs and stuff. So, you know, you've been uh, equally hilarious and equally not afraid to be controversial with your social media um, and, like, respect. what you put out there. Mm. Yeah, respect. <laughs> um, so are there any tweets or posts of yours that you remember that are your personal favorites? I think... I had like only one favorite which is still true and it was like you know it was my my radical days of um <laughs> man hating isn't that every day but someone was like feminism is just man hating how can you support that and I said feminism and man hating is two different things but I support both. <laughs> I, I legit screamed when I first read that. <laughs> what else have I been saying? I love the condom one. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a classic. A classic, I was yes. shook. <laughs> Honestly, I was in shock about how far that thing stretched. I don't know if it was mm. like... I mean, they should have called me for a commercial or something. I'm, Do you mean just, how far the post stretched or how no, far the condom stretched? how far stretched? the actual condom stretched. Yeah. I, I, okay, I'm going to just let the listeners know what's going on oh, and just yeah, in case yeah. you don't know because <laughs> all we said is the condom one and you said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm you surprised how far that stretched. So, <laughs> <laughs> Some context. So for some context, right. you posted um, a picture of a condom wrapped around your leg like all the way up your leg mm -hmm. and you said for anyone who says oh a condom's too small for me like what yeah. the fuck is this yeah <laughs> come on <laughs> debunk yeah <laughs> mythbusters who but i can't the whole leg like that's crazy yeah it was going up to my knee <laughs> like sir yeah. <laughs> you might be big but humble yourself my leg is bigger yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so okay paint a picture for us so you mentioned before how you know if if it wasn't for this podcast right now you'd probably be laying in bed just chilling yeah so a classic zara day off 
snuggled up with a box of sushi, binging a new Netflix show. Yeah. What's in your Netflix queue? Um, oh gosh, I've literally seen everything at this point. Let me bring it up, Netflix, actually. <laughs> <sighs> Just watched the new episode of The Handmaid's Tale. You know, I've not watched that yet. Oh, I'm sleepwalking on Handmaid's Tale. Oh, my God. It's, I know. <laughs> it's really good. But it's dark, you know? It's really dark. No, but I'm into that. <laughs> Okay, well, you will love this then. <laughs> just simply, no, no, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that one. I also do love a little darker, you know, especially when they have like a blue-green filter over something. I'm like, yep, I like that one. <laughs> and they bring in the depressing vibes of like, oh, this is just heavy. Like Your Honor on HBO. Ozark. Succession, insane. Also insane. Mm. Euphoria. Mm. I've heard really good things about that. I have too. You haven't seen Euphoria? No. <laughs> don't hang up. Don't hang right. up the call. Like, disconnect it. Oops, sorry, I haven't touched Don't, don't disconnect. <laughs> Zara left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. And it's, I feel like it's all shot like a music video. And it's just beautiful and the music's stunning. That's such a good way of putting it. All it shot really like is, a music though. It really it is, really yeah. Is. And, um, yeah, that's what I do. I watch series. I watch a lot of reality. Would you ever consider being on a reality show? I would. I mean, it depends on what it is. I would actually love to be a part of, like, Big Brother. Um, really? But That'd be cool. not for, like, the world to see, really. Or I don't know. Yeah. Just for you. Just for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so something I was wondering is, would you ever want to produce an entire record yourself? And someone named Thief Motif on the sub was wondering the same. I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's something that's been a dream of mine for a very long time to really learn how to produce. And I think it starts by learning maybe not so much music theory, but definitely some sort of understanding the music. And I don't do that very well. Like, I'm musical, but I can't play an instrument. I have a really hard time, like... What like what is that? Or like oh the beat comes on two and like for, like all of that, uh, and I think why I haven't been able to really taught myself how to like play the piano or something because that's goals like play people playing the piano or any instrument. Um, I just have the utmost respect for them because that's really dedication and hard work. Because singing, you know, you just open your mouth and you sing. Like, I mean, don't you sell yourself I mean? short. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> making millions off of singing. But no, it's true. Like, you kind of either have it or you and don't. it doesn't come naturally to everyone. It doesn't come naturally. Fair. And you can definitely be better. Like, you can practice oh, and learn how to sing technically better, for sure. But what I'm saying is that if I want to, like, let out my emotions through dancing or singing anybody could do that it's very natural for people to do that um and it might not look good or it might not sound good but i can be like yeah 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 wow if i want to let out my emotions on a piano i can't because i can't mm -hmm. play it and why i can't yeah. play it is because everything i do i want to be really good at it instantly so when oh I God, open, retweet. when I open Logic <laughs> or when I sit by a piano, I'm like, yup, I'm gonna play like Mozart. Or when I open Logic, I'm like, I, I'm my first song is gonna sound like a Max Martin song, and it's like that's not how it works. But <laughs> oh I God, coming back to like you know having discipline in that, I just don't know if I have that. Honestly, I don't know if I have enough like self discipline to sit down and struggle for the first year until I learn how things work on the software. Hmm. Um, it's not easy. So It's not. It's really not. And no. the more you learn, the more you understand the possibilities of everything you can do. Like, the more you learn, the more you realize that I really don't know as, as much as I thought I did. You know what I mean? Mm. Right. Yeah. But I would love to. Like, in my head, I would love to. Um, I would love the the feeling of 
independence and the feeling of really creating something that is 100% me because everything I do is a it's a collaboration you know I don't write my own songs like me sitting by myself um, in my bedroom like recording myself doing the vocals doing the background like the music so it will be really interesting to just see what would that be um, Mm -hmm. and what would it sound like but I would never say never. I think it's really good to maybe sit down with like someone who knows how to produce and just like help me, you know? I'll pay you easy. You can be my teacher. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Cause just sitting, like looking at YouTube, even though everything is there, it's just, it's hard. Especially when it doesn't sound like Max Martin produced it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I was going to ask, actually, your first songwriting session was for Never Forget You? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, that's fucking bonkers, because that's, like, my favorite song by you, I think. I but love that I just one. wanted to ask, was it, like, intentional, the, like, Andrea Bocelli, like, interpolation in the beginning? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> ah, no one asked me that. And when you said that just now... Uh, now I 100% hear it. I've never <laughs> thought no about one that. Asked that. No one, and I've never thought what? about this. But I hear it. What? But the, oh, it's that song. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. How come I've never thought that? I can't huh. believe that nobody's asked you that. <laughs> Because that's my that, that was like when I first heard that out. Because I I had like just left a conservatoire uh, to pursue like pop music and stuff, and so I was like yeah leaving that classical vein, and I was like oh shit you can marry the two like really oh, really wow. nicely that's like so dope amazing um, yeah it is yeah. such a beautiful scale <laughs> it is so beautiful yeah and it was all. That was accidental. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It was actually Eminike who came up with that. <laughs> Pushing away. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was him. <laughs> actually, it, that wasn't me. <laughs> Throwing him under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, he's so good with melodies. Eminike is a genius. Like, he is a musical genius. Yes, certified. And certified. And, like, I don't toss that around lightly. But he is a very, very special music man. Like, how he hears things and the way he produces and the way, like, I've never worked with anyone like him. Like, he will bring up, first of all, I don't think he plays any instruments, but he hears everything in his head, so he just, like, draws it out on the computer. And he will take it up, his laptop, and he'll be like, give me five minutes. And then after five minutes, he'll have a full beat, like a whole, the whole beat. <laughs> Love I'm that. Like, you, you just did that? What? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Casual. so I have a verse, a pre and a chorus already, if you want to hear it, in my head. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. Um, so he really, you know, for me, carried that session. And it was a great first experience um, because he's just really good to work with. Super nice, super kind. It was me and Minike in astronomy, and it was also astronomy's first session. So we were all, like, very nervous, but it went so well. And I didn't know if it was a fluke or I didn't know. I didn't know if it was like, is this a good song or am I just thinking this because it's my first time writing a song and I'm just really proud? Mm. <laughs> but I feel like it's a really good song. And I also knew it was oh, a really good song when MNEK, because there was a session for me. It was my session. And then afterwards, he was like, mm, I kind of want the song. And I was like, no, I want the song. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> but I really want to sing it. I really want the song. I was like, yeah, me too. Like, that's my song. <laughs> he was like, nope, that's not going to be your song. It's going to be my song. <laughs> and now it's our song. You found a compromise. You were going to throw hands. <laughs> and then we were like, let's do it together. Yeah. And it went so well. I love that we have it together. I think it I sounds stunning. I think he sounds great on it. Mm. I think I sound great on it. And our voices really marry each other in a way. 100%. Ignite the Phoenix asks, uh, are there any artists or groups you would love to collaborate with in the future? So, 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 so many. Avril, too. <laughs> Avril? Yes. Avril Levine. <laughs> I love that. Avril Levine. I love that so much. Oh. <laughs> this is what you said. Avril Levine. 
<laughs> it's just so bad. Oh my God. Um, yeah, there's so many. Where do I start? Okay, so I would love to collaborate with Snow Allegra, especially for No. We were talking about this R and B oh. situation. Mm. My fellow She's sweet amazing. Snow, I love her. Um, and then I would love to collaborate also Swedish Queen Robin. Um, yeah, <laughs> that would be insane. I would love to collaborate with the Blaze. Like I said earlier, I really like them. Two guys, I think they're from New Zealand. Um, Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj, Dua Lipa, um, some like really cool, girl, like Tanache. Oh, I would love that. Tanache. I think we can do a sick dance choreo. Uh, that would be amazing. Yes, and I also would love to do stuff with people that maybe you wouldn't think of, you know? Who am I even thinking of? <laughs> Imagine like Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Ooh. Legend. I can feel it coming in the air I tonight. have been obsessed with the Tarzan soundtrack, the songs he's oh. doing on the Tarzan <gasps> soundtrack recently. <gasps> Oh my god! So good recently. It's, it's, well, I, well, I've been obsessed with it recently. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Not but why? The recent. Okay, because my housemate was playing it, like blasting it the other day, and I was just like, oh my god, this is so Honestly, good. Honestly, it's one of the best soundtracks, like hands down. One of the best yeah. soundtracks one of the and best Disney sound. He did what D- he was supposed to do. Disney Mania yes. with Usher covering "You'll Be in My Heart," like. <laughs> Wow. Uh, probably one of my favorite <gasps> wow. songs. He took the Phil Collins song and he made it R&B and it wow. slaps. And it's like prime Usher too. It's like around the time of like Confessions. Oh, wow. oh it's so good. I've not have to heard check this, it out. I don't think. That's amazing. Oh my God. Oh yeah, it's so good. So Zara, are you familiar at all with like American style school yearbooks and yes. the, like senior superlatives? Mm-hmm. So just for our listeners who might not know so in american high school yearbooks the graduating class votes for their peers for like a number of different categories like labeling someone from your class so like best dressed or like most likely to win a nobel prize so you can really show what you think of each other (laughs) and um so like with poster girl we want to give you a chance to give your songs uh from the album their own senior superlatives nice yeah and feel free to include songs from the summer edition as well Okay, nice. What song would you consider the life of the party? Ooh, life of the party. I think it's kind of like Love Me Land, like sexy party vibe. I love the strings in that one. Look what you've done. I think look what you've done. Oh, yeah, look what you've done. (laughs) (laughs) Next one is most unique. Mmm. I think Love Me Land is quite unique. Love Me Land's going to sweep all of these. Yeah. Like the heavy bass and the strings. But also FFF is like, it's the most different sounding song on my album compared to the other songs, I feel like. It like sticks out a bit in a good way. Okay, and then the next one is Most Changed. I mean, what happens here, I changed a lot. Because I want it to be like, kind of, it's not innocent, but it doesn't sound like a nasty song, you know? Um, but it's just a little suggestive and I wanted it to be like right in the middle of not too like raunchy and explicit saying things, but I still want it to be like very obvious what I was saying. Mm. So, um, I think I rewrote that, uh, like five times. So what's the song that would be most likely to brighten up someone's day? Ooh. I love Need Someone. It brings me the happy feels. Um, Agree. You know, and it's very like, I don't need anyone, but I, I, I want you and I love you and we're having a good time, but I'm independent and I am, you know, a strong, funny, healthy, happy girl. That's the vibes I get. <laughs> the production just sounds so like bright and springy that it's just so like that's a good one for brightening up your day absolutely the romantic in me latched Mm -hmm. (laughs) latched (laughs) latched and then there's also most likely to succeed maybe a song before it was released you were like yeah this is gonna smash like this is gonna do really well um i mean i honestly think literally all of these songs could have been 
a single. And uh, I mean, I thought when I released Love Me Land, I was like, this shit is gonna smash the fucking charts. And then <laughs> it, 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 it didn't do that. It didn't do that. It, it fucking did the opposite. I was like, where is it? Where is it on the charts? It was nowhere to be found. And I was in shock. Like, I could not believe the world didn't want to hear this masterpiece. That's how I felt. Um, justice for Love Me Land. Yes. Justice for Love Me Land. <laughs> justice for Love Me Land. I kind of was wondering the same thing because I was like, yeah. Because when I first heard it, I was like, oh, this is new. This is like yeah. new yeah. and yeah. interesting, yeah. but it's still of the moment, yes. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And it slaps. Yes. And my mom loved it. And that's a good way of measuring things, especially <laughs> yeah. music, because she's like, my mom is the general public you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah. like she don't know any artist she only listens to like the radio or be here and there and when she's like oh this is hot that's when you're like this should fly and it did yeah. so I thought it was the most likely to succeed but you know nothing is too late I mean look at Lizzo she like her exactly her songs got big yeah Look at the Beach Boys still on Ree's playlist. <laughs> Leave me yeah. alone. Don't perceive me. You're oh my God, me from my listening habits. <laughs> what song um, would you say is the best storyteller? So sort of like is just great at describing mm. some a story you were trying to convey. Probably right here. Because, you know, I get the picture of someone, a couple you know, sitting at a restaurant and one is just playing with their phone. So you're like, hello, and you're describing like what you would like to do to get this person's attention. Yeah, I think that one probably has the most story to it. And then for our last one, the cutest couple that never was. So this will be for the song that maybe you wanted an artist on it and it just didn't work out or it just didn't end up uh, happening. I would have loved Kalani to be on Stick With You. Ooh. I can hear that. Ooh. Oh my Absolutely. God, Kalani's like one of my faves. She's yeah. so good. Her voice I is so love sweet. Her. Oh, her voice and your voice, I can see them going I together. I think would be amazing. Ooh. I think she's also a great person and um, good to know. a really, really good writer. So I think she would like do her thing on that one. I agree, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I like that. You, you definitely <laughs> yeah. thought about that in advance. I love that. Yeah. yeah. You definitely just hit AJ right in the feels right there. <laughs> yes. hundred sure. percent. So now we've done our superlatives. We have done our real pod girl shit. So now let's enter our question for the culture section. So this is where we answer your discussion questions from the sub. So blue, blue sky, sky, blue sky, it's blue sky with a Z, Mm. um, blue sky 13 asks what pop songs describe your life and where you're at right now. AJ, you go first. (laughs) Okay. Well, a song for me personally, that's really hitting at home is the difference by Daya. It just came out. Oh my God. so, So good. I think it is just a really beautifully produced pop song. And the lyrics are like, do I want you or need you? I don't know the difference. Oh. And that's really hitting home with me right now just because there are a lot of things in my life, like not even necessarily people, but just a lot of things in my life where I just like, I don't know if I want it or if I need it. Mm. Like, I feel like I need it, but then I'm like, oh, well, maybe I just want it and I'm just telling myself that I need to do these mm. things or that I need this for stability and really it's like I can free myself of that because just admitting to myself that this is something I want rather than something I need can just like I don't know help me save money or um yeah. can help me mentally and stuff like that so I would say that song is definitely resonating with me the most I like that okay so I actually picked bed <laughs> By Joe Corey and uh, Ray and David Guetta. And, you know, it's it's not as... Well, it's not it's not, not deep. Uh, like you were saying, you know, how you resonate with... Well, it's basically like, I am fucking obsessed with my boyfriend. And um, I want to be with him Same. all the time. <laughs> preferably in bed. <laughs> preferably <laughs> in bed. That's that. <laughs> 
<laughs> with little clothes on. Well, yes, yes, I understand. Oh, yes. Mood. 100%. Mood. Fuck clothes. We hate clothes. I just love that. Yeah. I love Ray. I think she's also one of the most talented writers. And just mm. such and like... her voice is awesome. Awesome. Natalie Don't. Oh. Mm. Natalie Don't. I'm so happy she's starting to get the recognition I feel like she deserves. Yeah. For sure. I think Nat- in my head, Natalie Don't and Love Me Land are like sisters. Yeah, they're not too far off, actually. They could absolutely at least be really, really good cousins. Yeah, they really, really good cousins. Like the favorite cousin at, at like a family function. And it's like, like, oh, hey, girl. Like, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Natalie Don't, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Natalie? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Do you have one, Sola? I have two. But Fixer Upper by Taylor Parks. Mm. She says, like, can you see through the cracks, clean up the broken glass? Baby, you might have to build a lover because I know my heart's a fixer upper. Oh. I was just like, oh, my God, that's so nice. But, like, <sighs> also just, like, like with COVID and everything and, like, um, everything going on, I've been, like, a little bit, like, in my feels. Yeah. But then at the same time, Boss Bitch by Doja Cat. Ooh. Yes. Because, like, in the same vein, like, at the same time, I'm like, but I know, like, the yes. person that I want to be and, like, what I should be kind of heading for. And, like, that song makes me feel like that person. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm a shine like fucking gloss, y'all. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> so, you know, even if I'm a fixer upper, I'm a shine like gloss. So that's where I am. <laughs> So, Re, what about you? For me, I mean, shout out to our previous AMA guest, Nick Jonas, because if I fall off his album, Spaceman Ooh. is just, mm. it just hits different, you know, something about it. I mean, I... Oh, I haven't had a chance to listen to that yet. You actually reminded me of that. There's not a single bad track on that album. It is incredible. Amazing. I love every second of it, but I, I admittedly am like... A little bit emotionally closed off at times and you know there's one lyric into this like you know and you came in like a cannonball and opened up the door the one i thought was closed for good and it do be feeling like that you know so <laughs> <laughs> i really it is the mood right now and i it's a great song it's definitely a standout on the album for me our second discussion question of uh the episode is by user zag Rowe. how different would an artist's career be if their most recent album was their debut so imagine that your favorite's mm-hmm. uh recent album is their debut how would their career and or public perception be different i mean i just immediately thought Rihanna. Mm, like if she came out the gate with Auntie. Mm. Yes. She would have been so different. Like, because that's her, like, anti-pop album in a way. I mean, she's doing everything, and she's such a broad artist. But if Auntie came out first, I don't think people will look at her as pop, obviously. Yeah. You know, I, she'll yeah. be less mainstream mm. and... Um, the Tame Impala cover and everything, like she would be kind of thrown in with the indie crowd. Or yeah, kind of. Be like of. one of those hidden gems, right? Mm. And I think I don't think it would have been just as commercial, commercially successful. You know, it wouldn't have been played in like H and M. You know. Yeah, exactly. I can see like <laughs> nobody really knowing about it, and then it coming on everyone's radar when like. Kiss It Better wins a Grammy or something for like best R&B performance. (laughs) And then everyone's like, oh, what's this album? Yeah. Who's this Rihanna girl? Yeah. (laughs) And then also how would um, Lemonade, if that were Beyonce's first ever album. 100%. I was thinking about that too. (laughs) Lemonade, also one of those like would have been so highly critically acclaimed like it is, but it wouldn't have been premiering on HBO, you know? I don't think it would have happened because the the infrastructure that was around Beyonce only mm-hmm. came because she was like a icon, you know? Yes. And people wouldn't have they wouldn't have really cared like mm. we do now. Or they just not have the context, yeah. Exactly. I was gonna say like the Beyonce self titled definitely couldn't have been her first. Ugh. Because no, no way. that was like <laughs> partition partition, how do you get to partition without having the whole career that is Destiny's Child that is Beyonce, you but know? But also, um, how are you going to let people know your album's out when you're like, When hey, you just release so it out of nowhere, no promo. Yeah. <laughs> no promo, unknown artist, first album, it's yeah. out. Yeah. There's the same thing with, with Lemonade. Like, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, this artist is 
is this a movie? Is this an album? Like, right, right. Like HBO? Yeah, so she could definitely do that because she is Beyonce and she knows she will grab everyone's attention. Like, exactly. This. Queen is she B. an actress? Yes. <laughs> right? How do you feel like your career would be if you released Poster Girl as your first album? I don't think it's too different, you know? I think it's very much on the same kind of path. Mm -hmm. Pop this queen. One, yeah, you know, it's still pop. It's still fun. It's still all of that. And I haven't swayed too much in a different direction. So I think that it my, at least how people would see me as an artist would be pretty much the same. Um, and then it's hard to like, what would have happened you know, when it comes to the measuring of success. I don't mm -hmm. know. I really don't know. Uh, but also, you know, like Ariana Grande said, she was like, I had these songs she didn't love, but she wanted to, like, solidify herself in the pop world until she could start to do stuff that she actually wanted to do, like a bit more R&B leaning. But I don't feel like I have that. Or, like, I don't feel like I've put out stuff just so... I will have more people liking me so then one day I can finally do stuff that I really want to do. But it's also, you know, a natural development. I hope I won't be doing the same songs my whole career. I hope it's going to change up a bit. But I've only released two international albums so far. So maybe ask me like five albums down the road. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In the future. <laughs> right, right. When you release your own lemonade. <laughs> hmm? yes, exactly. Hey, Ms. Larson. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're going to move on to our top five. So this week we decided to do, um, in honor of our Swedish guest, uh, top five Swedish acts. Besides our guest, Zara Besides Larson. Besides <laughs> our guest, Zara. Yes. So we could choose anyone but Zara Larson. Because I nominate everyone to go first, I will go first myself. Wow. wow. I'm going to take that up. bullet. Personal improvement. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Most changed goes to Sola. <laughs> So my number five is Leon. Ah, oh, um, I, like I her. think her voice is amazing. It's so rich and low and mm -hmm. um, everything that gives me life. My number four is ABBA, yes. obviously. So I didn't, I, they were, they were my number one. And then like, I just, things kept moving around oh, and it was wow, just, okay. I got emotional about it. So mm -hmm. I just put them at number four and then just decided to leave it. Um, number three Snow Allegra. Yes. We mentioned her earlier. We love um, her. We love Snow. My number two is Little Dragon. I just think mm. they're dope. They make amazing beats. And my number one is Tovalo. Oh. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Tovalo. Okay. But she really Americanized her <laughs> name. Mm. I'm like, stop yeah. saying your name like that. That's not how you say oh, it. Oh, uh, Tovlo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Tovlo. Yeah. No, it's not. It's Tovalo. <laughs> but maybe she did that because everybody was just saying it wrong. Yeah. She's like, fine. I think so. Yeah. It sounds good, though, in English, Tovlo. It like yeah. rolls off the tongue yeah. nicely. Tovalo. I actually thought it was an anagram for to love. Oh, interesting. Oh. You are thinking too smart You big-brained. You big-brained. <laughs> <laughs> so my top five would be, and okay, so you're going to have to help me pronounce these, I Zara. got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay, so my number five would be Lova, L-O-V-A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that good? Okay, cool. Yeah. So Lova makes some absolute bops. Found her about two years ago. My number four, Marlena. Mm, I really like her. Yeah. Oh, her voice is so like sweet and soothing. Mm -hmm. And she has that song next to me that I think the first time I heard it, I just like didn't think anything of it. I was like, okay, whatever. And the second time I listened to it, I was like, what the fuck was wrong with me? This is the best <laughs> song I've ever heard. And I played it nonstop the summer of 2017. So oh, nice. she's brilliant. I love her. Yeah. Um, number three is, and tell me if I'm getting this wrong, Tuva Sterka. Yep. Love her. But oh my gosh, her EP, her liability cover, the Lord cover that she does with just the, all the vocoder. Mm, beautiful. And then at number two, Tuvalu, Tovlo. Been obsessed with her music since it came out. Such a great writer. Such a good writer. And then number one, you 
said that Love Me Land sounds like this band on acid. It's ABBA. I love them. Because I grew up, like, my aunt would take me to Mamma Mia, like the musical. Yes. Ugh. Dancing Queen was my first favorite song, so. Amazing. It's like that. Reed, do you want to go with your top five next? Sure. I, I'm i feeling a little more mainstream with my picks, but um, at number five, the Cardigans. I mean, Love Fool is that iconic banger. I mean, it was mm-hmm. in the Romeo and Juliet remake. How could you forget? I mean, just legendary. And then Never I'd forget. say number four is definitely Roxette. Oh, right. Roxette was yes. like absolute leader of 80s, just movie jams. They were on yes. every movie soundtrack known to man. I love Roxette so, so much. Um, Amazing. And I would say number three is Tuva Stierka. I'm so mm-hmm. sorry to her for butchering her name even after I met her. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but I really do. I love all of her projects. She is incredible. Um, I love her voice, the sound of everything she does. Number two, along the same train to Valu. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love her music as well. <laughs> and she's also an inspiration on Instagram. I wish I could be as bad of a bitch as she is. Mm. I, she is iconic. True. Um, yeah, she oh my God, is. The bikini porn video. Yes. By the way, it's a song called bikini porn for anyone who's listening and yes. doesn't know yes. what I'm talking about. <laughs> she did not make porn that we know of. Um, <laughs> right. It was not a porn hub collab. She's hilarious. She's hilarious without trying to be hilarious, you know? Yes. And my number one is definitely ABBA. I mean, Dancing Queen is my first favorite favorite song we grew up listening to their vinyls my grandmother was a huge Abba stan so <laughs> I mean she was low-key we had every cd she was a share stan too where do you think I get it from so anyway <laughs> <laughs> okay Zara your turn okay um on number five we have Robin Robin's a queen she really really is oh from her old stuff to her new stuff like the whole catalog Insane. Sick. Pop perfection. Absolutely. Then we have Lennox, which is a duo. Happened to be my little sister in it. And oh, just, her best friend. Just so happens. <laughs> just right? by chance. Um, no, but they're great. They're very, like, soft, soulful. Mm. Very, cool. like, neo-soul R&B. Ooh, BRB. Wow. Just going to add this to my playlist. Yeah. What song should we start with? Uh, I love Selfless. I love Trade It Up. I also really like Empty Room. And they're doing everything by themselves. Like, I'm, I'm just in awe of them. On number three, we have Daniela Ratana. And she is a girl who is, like, up and coming just amazing beautiful voice (laughs) like the most insane voice and her style is really cool i know she's doing a lot in swedish i think she has some international songs too or like some english ones i mean but she is just a vibe and then we have tovlo tovlo (laughs) yay (laughs) Yay. uh just because like you all said she's great great writer uh, she's doing like pop in a really cool way. I feel like it's never ever cheesy with her. Like I don't never. think she could possibly write like a cheesy song. It's always fresh and cool. And then on my number one, Abba. Yes, yes. just Taste. timeless. Classic. It's just timeless. Like listening Honestly. through all of their albums, it's like if somebody released this today, it still would have been like a hit. That's how I feel. Exactly. Just with, diff- like, modern production or whatever. It's just good songs. You know what? We need you on the new ABBA album. Oh, oh my God. Because they're, they're coming back, so. I would die <laughs> and go to heaven. And thank you, Zara, for coming on Main Pod Girl. It was so much fun having you here. Yeah, thank you, Zara. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I had such a good time. And you just released an extended version of Poster Girl. Check it out. Poster Girl Summer Edition. It's really fun. Added some new songs on there. I am so excited to finally just be releasing songs. Like, I will keep releasing songs. Uh, we're not stopping here. We are on a roll. Yes. Good. So, yes. I'm nice. I love it. The most amazing summer. Still stay safe and take care of yourself and others while listening to Poster Girl yes. Summer Edition. Um, where can people love you, Lurky? Where can Ooh, they find you everywhere. on social media? I think I'm Zara Larson everywhere. If not, Zara Larson official. Maybe if they're nice, they would, like, give me a blue tick. 
on, on the platform, <laughs> whatever we're it. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just Zara Larson should come up. Um, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Pandora, all of that. Well, stream Poster Girl, y'all. You're Yay. missing out if you don't do it literally right now once you turn off this Literally podcast. right boom, now, boom, yep. Boom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, so um, you can find me at I Am Solo Music uh, on all platforms. And you can find me at AJ Marks Official on all platforms. And if you like this episode, let us know in the comments below if you're listening on Reddit. Uh, that's r slash popheads. And if you want, you know, a specific guest, if you want us to talk about a specific subject, let us know. And yeah, thank you so much again, Zara. Thank you. 